Today we're talking about growing peppers in containers and we're going to talk about everything from size of the container, what soil do we grow these in, how do we feed these through the entire growing season, how do we prune these or not to prune these, how are we going to support these plants, what kind of peppers should we be growing in containers. We're going to talk about it all. Hey, but before we get into that, if you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Riley. Welcome to my garden. And maybe this is the first video you've seen of mine. Well, go ahead now and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified next week when we put out a new video. Growing peppers in containers. What container size do we need? Well, minimum five gallon, preferably seven gallon, but bigger is always better. Remember, the bigger the container, the more soil. The more soil, the bigger the root mass of the plant. And the bigger the root mass of the plant, the bigger the plant and the more fruit you're going to be able to harvest from that container plant. So minimum five gallons, preferably seven, but bigger is always better. Now with any container you use, you're going to have to make sure that you have drainage holes on the bottom of that container. If you don't, have drainage holes there's nowhere for the water to go it will collect in the bottom of the container the next thing that happens is those roots are sitting in that water they start to drown they get root rot and your plants are going to die how many holes and what size holes in the bottom of that container my preferred method is to put four holes in the bottom of the container using a 3 8 inch drill bit and I put those holes around the circumference of the container at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. About halfway between the center of the container and the edge of the container is where I drill those holes. I also add one right in the center of that container on the bottom. Now, if you've got holes in the bottom of your container, but you put your container directly on the ground, you could still have problems because there's nowhere for that water to drain out those holes are going to get clogged up and you're going to have the same problems of root rot and those plants dying. So you need to make sure that your containers with those holes in the bottom are up off the ground a quarter to a half an inch so there's somewhere for that water to drain to. So we have our container, we have our drainage holes in our container, we're ready to add medium to our container and talk about what medium we need to grow these peppers in. Before we get to that, I want to address something that you may see on the internet or in YouTube videos, and that is the advice that we should add some gravel or some wood chips to the bottom of our containers to add in drainage and prevent root rot before we put our soil medium in these containers. That is not needed, and the end result is actually going to be a smaller plant and less fruit. Remember, the bigger the container the better because the more soil we have the better. Well if we're using 10 to 20 percent of the bottom of that container to put in gravel or put in wood chips, well that's less soil we're going to have in there to grow these pepper plants. So you don't need to do it. What you need to do is what we talked about which is make sure you've got the drainage holes in that container and make sure that container is up off the ground a quarter to a half an inch so you have somewhere for that water to drain to and your peppers are going to grow just perfectly without that added wood chip or gravel in the bottom of those containers. So what do we put in these containers? What we want in the container to grow these peppers is good quality organic potting soil. Not garden soil, not raised bed soil, but good quality organic potting soil. Potting soil is designed for containers. It has expanded rock called perlite in it that helps with aeration and helps with drainage. That's what we want in our containers. Now we have to be very careful. If we're going to go buy this potting mix, organic potting mix at a big box store, you're going to have some brands that are very, very cheap. You'll have some brands in the middle and you'll have some brands on the high end. Be very careful. I don't suggest you go with the cheapest brand. In my experience, the cheapest brand is really gambling with your plants. I have had some plants that have just done horribly with that cheap potting soil, and I have had some plants just outright died from growing in that. 
So if possible, go with something in the middle. Maybe not the most expensive, but something in the middle, and certainly not the cheapest that's available. Well, wait a minute. What if you have old potting soil from last year and you want to reuse that instead of going out and buying new potting soil? Well, you certainly can do that. Every plant you see growing here in my container garden is using old potting soil that I had left over from last year that I revitalized to make it better than new. And I've done a video on that. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description so that if you have old potting soil, have a look at that video. You're going to be able to revitalize your old potting soil and make it even better than it was when you first purchased it. For the sake of this video, let's assume that you're a new gardener and you don't have any potting soil. You've gone to the store and you've purchased some potting soil that is not the least expensive, but also not the most expensive in the store. On that container, it is probably going to say feeds up to three months. The question is, what does it feed up to three months? Does it feed bok choy or spinach up to three months? Will it feed bell pepper plants up to three months? And is three months even enough? What we're going to do is we're going to supplement this potting soil with some natural, organic, balanced fertilizer. And what I mean by that is on the front of a organic fertilizer bag, there's going to be three numbers, and those numbers represent nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And you want those numbers to be relatively close to each other. This example of Dr. Earth tomato vegetable and herb fertilizer is 463. You want something like this. I've used this in the past and it's worked great. This year, I've been using this down to earth all natural fertilizer 444. And this really has blown me away with its performance. But whatever you choose, on the back of that container will give you instructions how much of this to add to your mix depending on the size of container you're growing in. Just follow those instructions. But one additional tip, don't fill up your container with your potting soil, then try to mix in your natural organic balanced fertilizer. What's going to happen is you're either not going to fully mix it up or you're going to end up spilling 20% of it over the side of that container and you won't know how much of this balanced fertilizer you just lost onto the ground and how much is still in that container. Get a larger container, fill up your container with your potting mix, then dump that container into your larger container. Add in the correct amount as defined on the back of the box into that of your organic um, fertilizer into that larger container and mix it all up good and thoroughly so you know that's all mixed together good. Then transfer it back into your growing container. That way you're going to be sure that all of this natural organic fertilizer is in that potting soil. What peppers should we grow in our containers? Well, in my experience, you could grow bell peppers, you can grow smaller peppers in your containers. Really what's going to be more important is how we support those, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But in my garden this year, I have bell peppers, a standard bell pepper growing in these containers, and I also have these lunchbox peppers that are either orange or red from Johnny's Seeds. And these are smaller peppers that are around three to four inches long and an inch and a half in diameter. They are wonderful peppers. I love them. I've grown them for four or five years and I'll leave a link to these peppers in the video description if you're interested in seeing more about those peppers. What's next? We've selected our peppers. We have our soil in our pots. Our pots have drainage holes. They're up off the ground. We've got fertilizer in that potting soil. We're going to transplant these peppers. The next thing that we want to worry about or be sure that we have access to is water. The key to growing in containers is to make sure these containers don't dry out completely. Then we fill them back up with water. Then they dry out completely again and it just stresses the plants out. So wherever you're growing these container peppers, make sure you have access to water. 
And one of the favorite things that I do is I get a large container from a big box store, one that my hose will reach to, and I fill this up with water and I put a watering can on the side of it so I know I have water easily accessible when I come out to check my plants. So there is no reason why I shouldn't be watering these when they need water. The other bonus of a container like this is if you're concerned about using your city water because there's chlorine in it, you don't need to go out and buy a special filter for that to get that chlorine out. Your container, once it sits outside for a day or two, all of that's going to evaporate out of this water. So that's some money you can save by not going out and buying a special filter to filter your town or city water. Uh, before you add it into your pepper plants. To prune or not to prune? Well, I don't prune my pepper plants, but that means that I need to make sure that I'm supporting them well. I try to be a minim minimalist when I'm in the garden. I don't like to do a lot of excessive work and I would find pruning tomato plants for me to be excessive work so I don't do it. I just transfer my pepper transplants directly into these containers. I water them in really really well. I make sure I can see water draining out of the bottom and then once these peppers continue to grow because the pepper plants will get fruit on them there is a tendency that these branches can lean over and actually snap from the weight of those fruit. So you've got to think about ways to support these plants. And I do this in two ways. The first way is just a standard tomato cage. And just a side ranch, uh, side rant here. I, I don't understand why this is called a tomato cage. They don't work for tomatoes. Maybe indeterminate tomatoes, but I don't grow those. I grow determinant tomatoes, and these are absolutely useless for growing determinant tomatoes in. I'm going to just start calling this a pepper cage. So one option is to go get a pepper cage, put that into your container, let that pepper plant grow up, and these pepper branches, as they begin to lean, will, will lean against the sides of this. That will help prevent them from snapping. Before I talk about the second way I support my pepper plants and containers, I almost forgot. Let's go back to watering for a moment. The key with growing things in containers is to make sure that we don't let these containers dry out, right? Or dry out completely. And one thing you must do if you're growing in containers is add a mulch to the top two inches of this container. My preferred mulch is a hardwood mulch that I can get locally. It creates a great barrier between the top of the soil and that mulch. So if you pull it up, it is nice and moist underneath that mulch. It works great for me for making sure that I'm not letting excessive moisture evaporate out of these containers. So a key for watering is to make sure that you put mulch on the top of these containers. Now back to supporting the containers. We talked about the pepper cage. Uh, another one of my preferred methods is just to use these standard garden stakes you get from a big box store. They're hollow steel with a plastic coating on the outside. They last forever and cost about $1.99 each. Now, what we want to do, this is a, a bell pepper plant and this one is already starting to lean over. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this stake into this pot. We want to put the stake as close as we can to the side of the pot to where we can still support the plant. Uh, and that is to prevent excessive disturbance of the roots. But I've got this pepper here that's leaning over and I want to be able to support that so that branch doesn't break. It's already leaning over quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stake and I'm gonna insert it in here into my container. The next thing, and if you've seen my videos, you know I love to use Garden Velcro because I can use it over and over and over again every year. I just take a piece of Garden Velcro off of my garden basket. I'm gonna wrap it around both the stake and 
this leaning branch of the pepper plant. Strap it just like that. That will keep that branch from leaning over all the way and breaking off. In summary, size of your container, minimum five gallons, seven gallons and above is best. Make sure it's got drainage holes in the bottom and it's up off the ground. The next thing you wanna make sure you do is get good quality organic potting soil. You mix it with a balanced natural fertilizer per the instructions on that fertilizer box. Put it into your container. Transplant your pepper plants. Make sure you've got a water source nearby. Get some mulch on top of these pots. Make sure that you're supporting the plants as they grow, either using garden stakes and Velcro or a pepper cage you're going to be harvesting peppers out of your containers all season long. My name is Riley. Thank you for visiting my garden. Hey, if this video helped you out, please share it. It really helps the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell so you'll be notified next week when we put out a new video.